Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First and foremost, shout out those sisters. You guys did amazing. That blindfold thing, I never seen that before in my life. Um, so it was nice. Um, so I'm gonna do a few poems for y'all. Um, and this first one is about love. You broke me. You broke me in ways I can't even begin to explain. You took everything from me and left me with nothing but pain. You made me hate myself in more ways that I learn every day, but the worst thing about it is that no matter how much I run away from you, within me you left a stain. I'm tainted, I'm ruined, you made me so useless. As I relearn of myself and I love you, abused it. You took my health too, in my mind you subdued it. Time after time you took my mind and confused it. I've burned and I've crashed, I'm left stuck in the past. As I look back into time, I regret all the time that has passed. Old peers in six gears, starting families and careers. While I'm relearning of myself and overcoming my own fears. Things I should have done when I was young and I was reckless. Detrimental to my mental, regret has me depressed in. As I grow older and older, I've come to learn how much I'm damaged. Worst of all was this fall, I've learned how much you left me abandoned. We were a toxic couple, us two. Either we were in love or abused. The hurt never comes first. When you're oblivious, it'll randomly come to you. But it leaves you wanting more because it's the only thing that you know. To the point that it still comes out to your mind long after you learn to let it grow. Every time you come back together, you crash even harder than in the past. But so much emotional tw ties and twisted lies, you tell yourself it'll be better than the last. I'm smarter this time. I know my limits, I'm fine. I know what happened to others, but it'll be different this time. We're toxic and I know it. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I don't. Hard for me to love you when every promise you, you made you broke. I gave you all of me and you took everything, even my hope. I thought we were something special, I resent you and truly I hate you the most. How easy was it for our love to turn into hate? I feel so stuck in between, especially when I think about our past, all the history and memories. Hard for me to let go, especially after all the things you've done for me. Even when it hurts the most, the truth is, you gave me the closest thing to peace. You were my home away from home. I came to you when things were rough. For me, you'd bust it down when I would frown. You made me happy when things were tough. I played around when I was down. Man, I thought you were my forever. Even when you almost killed me, I didn't even think I should get it together. Because you gave me an escape from all the pain. It made me feel good in ways I can't explain. You made me feel warm and relaxed. My soul was trapped. I felt so sick when you were away. For you, I'd rob and I'd steal anything the copper feel. Hard for me to find someone else like you and without you, it's hard to heal. Every time I try to leave, I feel like I lose a part of me. You never leave my thoughts and always end up right in front of me. Either you pop up on my feed or you see me and you try to tease. I try to stick to my decision, motive driven, but you always know how to keep me pleased. <sighs> Crazy thing is I heard things about you, but I always thought that I could handle you. I thought that I was different, that I could hit it without having to be down with you. But you, you're different. I learned this lesson and now you got me stressing. You kept me guessing, took all my blessings, and now my life has become bound to your presence. And even though I've left, I know you're still my test. You still come to me in all my dreams. And although you're gone, please don't respond as I write this letter to my first love, my DOC, drug of choice. And so this poem here is called Toxic Love, and I just want to break this down for you real quick. It's, it's not about, you know, love to another person, loving another person. Uh, my name is Abdurrahman Wurasama, I'm a person in long-term recovery. What that means for myself is that I went through addiction in my life. Does anybody know what addiction means? Raise your hand. So I went through addiction in my life. I've been sober for about four years. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, and so I do poetry, you know, and um, I also have an organization called Generation Hope. If you guys could bring your phones out really quickly and pull it out um, and write Generation Hope MN on either Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, everybody pull your phones out. We put out a lot of content, a lot of poetry, a lot of art, a lot of, we even have a podcast called Sobriety Sundays, and we teach the Muslim community about addiction, 
uh, recovery um, and have a lot of content out there. Um, so I'm going to perform another poem to you guys because this one was a little bit, kind of a lot of wordplay in there. Um, probably, you know, kind of went over your head a lot of the bars. Um, but this next poem is, is really what I want people to truly understand what addiction really means. Um, and it's called The Fleeting Thoughts of an Addict. So picture this. When you struggle with addiction, one of the hardest things isn't really the addiction in within itself. It's the trauma underneath it. It's so hard to let go. Has anybody heard of the term withdrawal? Who's heard of it? So withdrawal is a process where an individual that's struggling with addiction, when they try to stop, right, it's kind of like if, where is it? where's a kid here? Has, who has a phone? Where's a kid that has a phone? Okay, she has a phone. What happens when your dad takes away your phone? You get sad, angry, can't stop, can't get away from your phone. That's a withdrawal symptom. With drug addiction, it's a little different, right? When you stop using the drug that you're addicted to, you get really sick. Uh, and it can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days to even a month, right? And so it's, in the, it's a process. And so this next poem is called The Fleeting Thoughts of an Addict. And I know we're short on time, so I'll, I'll leave it with that. <clears throat> Sleepless nights filled with fright, filled with ache and loss of might, filled with sweat and cold shiver, filled with pain and it rarely withers. Enough pain to demoralize a man, hard to count the time, yes, hard to withstand. The pain that one feels as he lets go of what he loves, hard to understand the withdrawal from drugs. Be that as it may, it's possible to listen so that one could try to understand what it's like to be in prison. Perspective is subjective so long our stories have been neglected. For so long, every addict has yearned to just be respected, only to be rejected. Submissive to society's concepts, acceptable of its labeling context, every addict believes they're worthless due to society's superiority complex. Objects. They just see us as tokens of conquest, tokens of opportunity. They just see us as prospects. I'm sick of it. Back to scheduled programming, sobriety in society, happy smiles to keep them smiling, Everyone loves a happy ending, but is it truly progress? When I get a, I'm so proud of you for changing, but disgraced if I tried but died in the process? Cold sweats, 90 degrees, but I'm shivering, this is a bold step. Reminiscing why I started, I'm flustered with regret, secrets, battling within myself, I'm steady on defense. It's me versus me, but I'm restlessly weakened. Am I weak then? If I'm losing but trying to repent? Seeking to change my ways, but it's harder to reset. Let me reset. Let's go back to our roots. No more running from these problems. It's time to face the truth. Wasn't the brightest kid, or at least that's what I was told. But maybe I was smarter, but I believed the dream that I was sold. Or maybe I was good for nothing. Maybe I had it coming. Or maybe I was just a kid acting out. I didn't see what I was becoming. Maybe I was cursed, a freak accident by birth. Accepting that I was an embarrassment made me feel like the worst. Faced tribulations since I was young. Is it part of who I've become? Maybe I started problems because it's the only thing I could get done. A troubled child since a pubescent, I remember fights as an adolescent. My past wasn't the most pleasant, but I didn't understand that until the present. Mama was really struggling, six kids, single mom hustling. I remember lights out every other month, sleeping in the living room, never wondering. Playing with the candles and flashlights, we used the empty soda bottles in our sword fights. And while we made the best of our struggles, and our mother was tearing up every other night. It took a little while to understand that our mother took the role of a woman and a man. Raising us and struggling to provide, she tried her best to keep us in a trance. EBT to keep us full, and Section 8 to keep us full. My government, government assistance was our provision, but I didn't even notice that until middle school. And I really realized, I remember realizing when I was that I was poor, because I wore the same uniform every day. And then someone asked me if this, I was wearing the same uniform that I was wearing yesterday. Same with the EBT, you swipe a card and get food free. So when someone told me having free food made me poor, it only momentarily confused me. As I started to pick up the pieces and learn that we were fighting life on defense, my confusion slowly turned into anger. Getting into trouble only made me feel decent. Hard to explain how that shifted to my drug use or what made me so overzealous. Was it the want for love and affection that caused me to be so rebellious? Maybe it was because I never learned to cope. As kids, you're taught to only cling on to hope. As if those feelings of anger and sadness don't linger. Maybe that's the reason I took my first talk. 
Or maybe it was because my father wasn't around. I blame my mother when he moved out of town. We felt like they were just kids when he would come around, but when he left, the struggle came to drag us back down. It was almost like we lived our life in two portions, one for an hour and one for a second. So we blamed our mother for our misfortunes, and I noticed that she was trying her best to make our hell into heaven. And I love my mother. I came to realize later that she did the best that she could do. But in that same time frame, my hatred slowly shifted towards my father's absence too. Why did he leave and where did he go? Why can't he see that his kids need him the most? What is the reason for this feeling and how does it relate to my season? In it, I'm trying to find the meaning. My thoughts are often fleeting. Withdrawals aching, my body's shaking through this pain. I'm learning patience. Through my anger, I'm starting to break. And if I'm not mistaken, breaking points often birth recreation or destruction. I'm reluctant. My body isn't that tough. The plug's calling my line saying he just re-upped it. It's luck. No, it's fate. I must make this mistake. I can handle myself just one taste. And after that, I'll start this process after today. I'll change. I just need some time. And the process goes on, so I often get stuck in time. And when I don't, my heart and mind usually fight to take a side. It's like a never-ending cycle. But I'll break it in due time. Just one more high. Just one more time. The fleeting thoughts of an addict's mind. Can I do one last poem? One more? That cool? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I feel like I don't want to leave you guys on a bad note. And the first one, I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous. So, you know, what happened was I got a little stuck. So, I'm trying to redeem myself, you know? I'm trying to redeem myself. So, I also got a book. It's called From Addict to Advocate. I released it uh, last year. It was featured in uh, Confident Muslim Yaqeen. Uh, so, it was like uh, in Baltimore or whatnot. But, I got like 30 books, and so we're going to be selling them after this. Um, shameless plug. You know, Bono, I got it from you, man. But so this one, this one's called Journey. Didn't memorize this one. But I'm a, I got you. My mind is often restless, demons on my guest list. Life's been depressive, when will things get progressive? Through my life, I'm steady grieving, funerals to grad achievements. It's hard to find a balance while I'm swimming through this deep end. I'm learning through these lessons, through life a hidden message, and through my past regressions, God turned them into blessings. Life is what you make it, you give it and you take it. Sometimes you'll try to fake it, but you'll learn that you're mistaken. You gotta be authentic, or filled with imperfections. The beauty and reflections in the heart of your intentions. You'll learn that dirt is not a curse, more like a blessing from its birth. From a seed until a tree is standing giant on this earth. From the branches to its leaves, welcome in the wind's cool breeze. To the roots embedded in the ground, to the seeds that were once beneath. It was once nothing underneath, buried where everyone could have reached. But stood over and overlooked what he thought of this future tree. Except for the few that trusted that the seed will go back into its place. And give back from what it takes. The circle of life is so amazing, so perfected in its way. But back to what I was saying about how my life has been playing, and I constantly give advice, but to my own, I'm hesitating. It's hard for me to understand why I'm steady playing someone's hand. But for my own, I hesitate. I'm scared of my own reprimand. I'm steady trying to grow, but it's been hard for me to let go of all the hurt and all the trauma. It's like the only thing that I know. Because even when I try to heal, it's been hard for me to feel all the blessings that surround me it almost never seems real. Imposter syndrome at its finest, even when I'm at my highest. And I'm sketched out by the love, my opinions on that are biased. I feel like I don't deserve it. How could I be given purpose? Behind closed curtains, I'm certain that somehow I can't be worth it. It's why I'm so reserved and the reason I'm conserving of my heart and my soul. I'm scared of losing my inner person. This world is claim, filled with claims of being real, but they fake, can't relate. Honestly, it's a mixed reality. People so two-faced, I think some may have what they call a split personality. In actuality, it's a tragedy to witness such catastrophe that we're all masquerading to be someone that truly and honestly we'd rather be. It's hardest to be the truest version of the person that you are. The hidden ugliness and the fallacies, we are scared of our own scars. But the truth is, there's no perfection on this road to redemption. It's a lesson and a blessing to learn of our truest reflections. Our mistakes were corrected. Our imperfections are hidden blessings. And you can't do better if you're the best. So what's the point of wanting perfection? It's the journey, not the destination. Is that the gist of what I'm explaining? That there's more beauty in the struggle, but the truth is we're just complicated. So be patient and persevere. Our lives are short and our end is near. And you may not know where you're going, but you know where you are right now. Right here. Thank you.